Hello. All right, so today uh, we're going to talk about pattern recognition and really the uh, understanding what data you have first because part of pattern recognition is identifying features that best represent signatures ultimately you can use to identify classes uh, through pattern recognition. Um, I have a spreadsheet loaded in Excel here and we're going to be bringing this into one of Tin Man's uh, latest tools. Now this tool isn't commercially available yet but we use it in-house and we'd love to take a look at your data and give you some help with it. Uh, and understanding and visualize uh, what features work best for a potential signature. Uh, in this case we have a set of I think there are roughly 446 feature vectors of various gas concentration levels so uh, for instance toluene 70, toluene 65, 60, 55, 45, etc, etc, uh, ethanol, ammonia, acetone, acetaldehyde. Um, and so 445 feature vectors which uh, have resulted from a uh, reading of sensors, a set, set of sensor arrays of 128 I believe uh, features or elements uh, in that sensor array and so each of those comes back with a reading and each of these rows is a feature vector, a vector of feature readings. And so what we want is a tool that we can just load this in and visualize all of this information in such a way that we can make the best selections of features ultimately uh, and uh, establish the best signature to identify our patterns for our classes. So let's, uh, without uh, further ado here, let's load Tin Man Patterns. I have it running in the background. Um, and we're going to go ahead and import that data. Uh, I'm just going to load it and uh, we'll use our data import wizard to bring the data in. We get to see a sample of it. We get to say what the structure is so the uh, program reads it properly. Um, and so this is, uh, here's the first column of data which is the names of profiles and classes. There are other ways to structure this. This is the way ours is structured. This first column is the first column of feature values. It's not the name of feature vectors. And so we're just going to go ahead and import those 128 features and 445 feature vectors. Uh, so that comes in and so now we're looking at Tin Man Patterns uh, and uh, we have uh, 100 and well let's see 87 profiles loaded 445 total feature vectors and uh, there's a number of windows here and we're going to ignore the match results and the profile vector results for now what we're looking at here is a visualization of a ranged um, set of features uh, across all of these patterns. So you remember our acetaldehyde, our various concentrations. All I'm doing is going to, I'm going to arrow through these. Each of these classes uh, has vectors. So feature vector 1 ID, here's a unique ID. Feature vector 2, vector 3, vector 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these were the eight readings for acetal, acetaldehyde concentration level 10. And there are eight total. And so all we've done is imported these 87 profiles and I can just arrow down through those and it tells us how many vectors we have in each in the parentheses. In the brackets we get the concentration level because that's the way we had structured our data. If we expand any one of these we'll get the uh, listing of each of the feature vectors. Now you'll notice that <clears throat> this visualization area over here uh, we have a lot of features so it's going to go way out to the right here and we can change the you know the relative width of this uh, so we can see more but you know that's just the way this data set is structured but as we arrow through each of these classes you can see that there's a plot that takes place uh, let's see if I expand this one out uh, so a connection is made between the various readings of each of those features so this is an excellent way I'm gonna go ahead and send this window away so we can see more of this and so each of these uh, columns is ranged with the min and max of the feature and now I'm going to close the match results. We're not in the profile matching uh, stage yet. Um, and we can look at all of the individual attributes. So here's attribute 1, and you can see it's highlighting over here. Attribute 2, 3, 4, and I'm just going to arrow through all these. And this goes down all the way to 128. Now conveniently for us, what Tin Man Patterns has done is it's automatically computed the min and the max, the mean and the range for every single one of those. Uh, on the import and so we get to see how those change. I'm just going to arrow through over here and just show you the change in these vectors and so you can see how it changes and now I'm going to go really fast and you can see how each of these profiles you, know, there, you can see visually and you know, through what what appears to be some manual animation if you can call it that 
of how these different classes change in terms of the visualization across these features. But more importantly, this numeric representation over here will ultimately help us decide what are the best features to get the most consistent pattern uh, or signature that we can use as a uh, class comparative pattern. Um, now what we want to do, there are two stages here. So first we've, we've loaded the data in and we visualized it. Now what we want to do is create, since we have eight individual readings for a particular class, we want all of those to represent that class. We can say when we enroll this class so that we compare against it in future readings, we want to use an average of vectors. Uh, so we'll choose a set, let's say three per profile. I know some of these have just a few, but for, for, for our demonstrations, we're just going to choose, we're going to choose three anyway. Um, and so we're going to go and enroll. What it'll do is it will zip through all 87 classes, use the first three profile, first three feature vectors it sees, average those up into a baseline uh, uh, profile vector, and then uh, display that. So let's go ahead and enroll all of these. All right, we're done. You can see that they all 87 profiles and their vectors were moved from the not enrolled category to the enrolled category and so we have them over here and so now we can look and we see that there's been a change here we have a different icon representation uh, we see that these guys have a little uh, uh, signature element in the middle of the circle here and it says registered this uh, feature vector has been registered but averaged into those three and now when we click on this, we can actually see, it'll be a little hard to see the distinction. There we go. Um, you can see how the average is, I mean, the, excuse me, the um, baseline uh, signature is shown as a, uh, a, a black line. And the one that we're looking at here uh, is a dashed red. All right, so what we can do now, now that we've enrolled all of these, uh, we get a little more data over here. We get some inter-class variance data, and we can sort by that. So still looking at our attributes uh, listing here of all 120 attributes, the variance, the amount of variance across classes that each of these features uh, exhibits ultimately will be a factor in how we choose which features uh, would be best used in a signature, a standard signature. And there are other, some other data over there too. Uh, but I'm just going to go forward and let's go ahead and identify, we want to walk through all 445 total feature vectors, compare it against all 87 profiles, and give a ranking uh, up to 50, the, the, the top 50 most likely uh, matches. Uh, and we want to see how we're doing just as we stand right now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll through these, we get our progress thing here. Uh, we can see we're going through uh, uh, all of the vectors. Uh, we've got 136 matches, 17 no match, 25 close. Close are two and better. Uh, two, uh, excuse me, two um, uh, rank twos. And so we're almost done there. We've got a 92, 90. We've got a very nice success rate here. And so um, by using some pretty fundamental or elementary distance algorithms and some variations there, uh, some improvements on that, uh, we get a perfect reading for acetaldehyde. You can see we have a, a green icon there because uh, let's bring our match back. We're going to go back to view and feature vector match results and the profile match results. Over here, what will remind you a lot about a, a Monopoly card, if you remember those uh, property cards, it looks like that over here. But really what this does, uh, as you click on each one of these individual vectors, it will show you uh, a ranking uh, from 1 to 50 of who the most likely match is uh, from a profile. And you'll get a green. Uh, green is pretty um, universal here. When you have a match, you'll see green. And so the number one ranked match, likely match for this particular vector here when it was presented to the matching mechanism was acetaldehyde 10, which in fact is its parent here. And so that's a score of one, and you can see the scores as well. And now we can arrow through these. Now we've got perfect seven out of seven here, five out of five here, seven out of seven here. Here's one where we had um, a close. We had eight rank ones and two rank twos. And so we can go through here, and you'll see that the rank twos are yellow. And so if I click on that, 
uh, we go back over here and we can see that uh, we did get the correct match at rank 2 uh, with this score here but one scored a little higher it was actually acetaldehyde which is good uh, and as well the one that below it is acetaldehyde but just the the wrong concentration levels so it seemed to match just a little bit just a hair better uh, with the acetaldehyde concentration level 40. Um, here is the same kind of thing and so we can see there's a there's real a real close tight association of this level of concentration and this one and so that well what either that's matching or it's the sensor array themselves um, uh, sensor arrays themselves uh, that uh, are not allowing that distinction in any case let's go to one that didn't do so well here we see uh, uh, beyond rank two so we got rank threes and below um, and if we click over here we can see well out of 87 profiles we still did rank number three three out of 87 is pretty good but the ones that beat us uh, still are the same chemical just different concentrations. so that's still good news but we're at a rank level of three and so um, this is a process you would go through and um, with the initial uh, unaltered kind of influence levels across features you can see even this kind of a matching mechanism uh, with, with this particular data set is pretty good uh, 91 percent correct and even the ones that weren't correct were pretty high ranking ones now the last thing I'll show you before we um, we're gonna break on this video and then the next video we're gonna talk about how we can modify those influences and actually start to manipulate how the profiles are viewed based on these features um, to get the most stable signatures uh, but this uh, the profile vector results I'm gonna go ahead let's pull this out and we'll go ahead and make this go all the way across here let's see if we can get it all the way across alright so what we're looking at here is a breakdown of and when I click on a pattern so acetaldehyde 100 it's gonna display all uh, nine of those feature vectors for acetaldehyde uh, 100 and what it's doing is it shows each feature of each feature vector for that particular class and it gives us that so we have actually have the entire spreadsheet that we we originally loaded but we have the feature values and the match scores so for each feature across each feature vector we have the match scores and we can see how they rank remember green is good green is ranked one uh, and we can see then we also might want to know well for any one particular feature where we didn't rank the highest in terms of distance in that matching uh, well what was the closest match and so if we looked at this uh, feature 10 for instance it looks like feature 10 for acetaldehyde 100 matched more closely to acetone 250 300 and 350 um, and then we can also look and that's very helpful if you start to look at how are uh, these classes interrelated and in what in what ways in what features are they interrelated we can also click and have these change to self rank what self rank means is for any one particular feature in a feature vector when it was compared against itself how did it rank and so obviously when it ranks really high or ranks one we're gonna get green um, we're gonna show one rank two is two um, and so obviously what becomes meaningful is where we see some really low ranks for a particular feature and uh, we know that it didn't score very well if we go back to the match scores for feature 57 now it's probably gonna reset the thing here okay so there we are we can see those match scores are not 0.9 they're not in the highs uh, so we didn't do so well now ultimately we can modify some of these and what we might want to do is go back to um, the not the match results but the attributes uh, uh, pane and we can look at these attributes and we now get this other reading not just interclass variance but intraclass variance and with intraclass variance we see how much a particular feature varies within a particular class that's how stable is that feature and we can use those two in a ratio interclass over intraclass to ultimately decide which are per perhaps some of the best candidates to include in a final feature selection process uh, we just took everything as you know with uh, uh, equal weighting um, uh, based on that spreadsheet and did pretty good on the matching but we can improve this probably get it up to 95 to 98 percent by mo modifying the influence levels of these various uh, features we'll get into that in another uh, video but if you would like us to take your data and show it in here and give you some information back perhaps in a report 
uh, some screenshots and some uh, uh, some exported data file that you can work with. Uh, we have a way to do that. Just shoot us an email at support at tinmansystems.com. If you want more information on this particular technology, this uh, Tin Man Patterns product, uh, just uh, shoot same email, uh, support at tinmansystems.com, and we'll get back to you. Thank you.